Econito. When I am um, parked somewhere at night that uh, might be a little sketchy or dangerous or whatever because I'm desperate to find a place to park, like a roadside pullout, for example, I often wonder what am I going to do if somebody tries to break in the vehicle. I already have on the door, on both doors, both front doors, an anti-intrusion device. I'm not going to go into detail, but if somebody breaks a window, they're not going to be able to get in, but they can still pose a threat. And so I've already eliminated the first threat for them to get in, but now I want to figure out how to deal with them if they persist. And so I have, I am going to disclose my weapons. The reason why I don't want to disclose uh, the front door over there, the um, uh, the mechanism is for my security reasons. But these weapons I have are not expensive, and so I'm not worried about. I don't think uh, you know disclosing what I have here. It's just not worth breaking in and dealing with me to try to get these, <laughs> especially when I'm right next to them. Okay, so out of all these, um, I strategically locate most of them in the middle of the vehicle. I have other weapons in other locations. These are all generally intended to be non-lethal. Um, this knife could be lethal. The other ones, it would be pretty difficult for those to be lethal. So, out of all these, which do you recommend I deal with? Let's say if somebody breaks a front window and they're trying to get in, they're trying to crawl through the front window, uh, which one should I grab and why? Could you please let me know? So, here's what we have. We have a baton. It's a solid hardwood baton. And I marked it um, as tire checker. Because if I'm doing a border crossing, they might not like this to be a weapon. And so I call it a tire checker. And of course, during a border crossing, I'm going to um, lock all these up in a safe. All right. And uh, oh, what's interesting about border crossings is the bear spray is legal to bring into Canada. But check this out. Uh, this is not where is it the little pepper spray well this is not little but the smaller pepper spray smaller than the bear spray is not legal to bring into Canada all right let's get back to business here so what we have the um, the baton so if I grab this I can poke and if I hit somebody with this it's going to hurt really bad, especially on the hand, well, anywhere. <laughs> it could actually break a bone or something. It could, this could really mess somebody up. I'm thinking the disadvantage of this is the threat can grab it away from me. Um, but if they're outside the vehicle with uh, the door jam, the and that's still not going to be much of a threat. All right, so now we have a large flashlight that has these... Um, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I didn't think about this before making the video. What are these called? These protrusions that are sharp, um, intended to hurt somebody if you hit somebody with a flashlight. So... This might be better than the baton in the sense that it can be used like a baton. This is very heavy and made out of aluminum. Uh, it's heavy due to the big batteries inside. So if I hit somebody with this, it might hurt even more than the baton. So the baton may be just a backup in case they grab this from me. And then I can <laughs> go to war with a baton. Uh, but also another benefit of the flashlight is to see who it is. And uh, if I push the button three times, 
it's a strobe light that is uh, capable of blinding somebody if they're looking at this. All right, so we have two covered. Next, which one? I don't know. Um, here we, it's, oh, it'd be funny if somebody actually did try to break in while I'm making this video. That'd be, that'd be some kind of shit there, wouldn't it? Okay, this is USB charged. Um, it's not Taser. Taser is a brand name. This is not a Taser. This is a stun gun or a zapper. I don't know if it's really a gun. It's a, it's a stun Stun and flashlight, mostly for stun purpose. Let's see what happens. All right, it has safety. Okay, flashlight. It's fairly bright. And then another flip forward. I think this is 100,000 volts. I'm not sure. Let's see. It doesn't say on it. All right, so I better not get this very close to the camera. So just the sound of that, that's, that's extremely loud and intimidating. I don't know, man. What do you think? This versus these, this, this you can't, well, you could use it as a jabber. These are very pointy here. So if somebody breaks in, I can use this to jab them. Um... Hmm, well, I don't know, I may be on to something with this guy here. It helps to make the video I'm thinking better because I'm under pressure. Hmm, huh. now the disadvantage of this is it can discharge over time, so I just have to pay attention and uh, charge it every month, I guess. Two months, three months, probably every three months, but every month just to be safe. Especially if I've practiced with it. Uh, I'm not going to practice with it on myself. So I'm tending to go for this guy here because you have three, th you have at least three things with this one. You've got the uh, bright flashlight, but unfortunately not the, not the, um, oh gosh. It's late at night, and I'm one of these Americans watching this. Um, but it doesn't do the, not flicker, strobe. It doesn't have the strobe, but that's still good. And then also this, but it doesn't have flashlight and stun at the same time. It's pretty loud and intimidating. All right. I'm kind of favoring this thing. It's just, I mean, if somebody breaks in and then I approach them with this, uh, I don't think they're going to try to grab it. <laughs> Would you try to grab this out of my hand if I had this, if, if I was coming at you with this? Would you? I don't think you would try to grab that. And I can use it to poke them on the front. Okay. I think this is the winner, but I'm not for sure. Next in line, we have... We have uh, bear spray. And there's not... Maybe not a lot to say about that. It's just obvious. Um, if they're breaking in the vehicle through the front window is the only place they can get in. I don't have any side windows that they can get in. Uh, except... There is a side window here, but it's blocked substantially. It would be just, it would just, uh, there's just no way um, they would win that fight. I would already have taken off in the vehicle before they could even uh, start to crawl through that window while I'm in the vehicle, that is. All right, and now let's see what we have here. Oh, here's another stun gun. Um, this is a lower, let's see, lower voltage, I think. Oh, and it does do the strobe. 
and oh okay not quite as badass as the other one okay let's let's do one after the other and you let me know which one okay that versus but this one also doesn't do this wait what happened how did I do the strobe? Oh, no. How did I do the strobe light? No, it won't do it. I think if it touches skin or whatever, it's going to, it's going to actually do the. Yeah, I know there's a little fiber hanging on. <laughs> uh, it's going to, it's going to um, circle around. The base more. Um, hmm. How did I do the strobe light? That's driving me crazy. Didn't it do a strobe? I don't know. What's this switch down here? I haven't messed with these very much. Oh, that's off. Okay. Um. Oh, this one uses a proprietary charger. That sucks. No USB. I don't like that. Hmm. Oh, well. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, the horn we're not going to actually demonstrate inside the vehicle. Because that cannot be recharged. I don't want to use it up. There's also a... A uh, really super badass whistle here. So with the horn, that's another option. Uh, and I could grab two at a time, but I don't think that's recommended. Maybe it is. What do you think? Is What circumstances would I need to grab two at one time? And should I grab... Uh, well... Wait, why is this on? Ooh, shit. Oh, I forgot to turn it off. Whew. Okay. Um, good thing that wasn't a gun. Jesus. All right, so with the horn, well, self-explanatory, it's going to deafen the person and probably make their ears ring. So that could be really super effective. What I like about this is no contact. Oh yeah, the problem with this, contact. You want to try to avoid contact. And maybe even try to avoid injuring somebody due to lawsuits. Even with my cameras rolling, you never know what kind of crooked legal system I could be in. It, uh, located with crooked judges and lawyers who only defend the locals. And I might not be a local. So this thing, contact, 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 contact. Bear spray, no contact. Horn, no contact. Big advantages, no contact. Bear spray, disadvantage, it could substantially affect me. I could be affected by it and not be able to see and get teary-eyed. Uh, it could, the, uh, so yeah, the liquid could do that. The horn, there's no chance of that happening except hurting my own ears. Even when the horn is, um, is let's see here. Even when the horn is uh, not facing me, it's still going to be, uh, the sound waves are going to come right back at me, bouncing off of stuff, and it's going to be loud. But a lot louder for the enemy. What do you think about the horn? Should I grab that first? All right. Hmm. Uh, I got another horn, too, as a backup. Um... I haven't even tried either one of them, but um, obviously this is the, <laughs> that's the monster to go with. Next we have a flare gun, which is um, probably the least likely one I'm going to demonstrate inside the van <laughs> and not even going to try outside because I could get in trouble for a false um, distress call. So these are like little, they're not little, these are like huge shotgun shells actually. 
and this one came with four but it has room for six maybe i misplaced two of them so with the flare gun you've probably seen these activated on tv once in a while um in the well these are it's illegal to use these for shooting at somebody but if it's a life and death situation then i can do it so the problem with this guy is is it's the most legal liability um this is this uh, has the most legal liability so this would more like be used after the incident or just to shoot up in the air but not at the person but do shoot it at the person if this is the last line of defense and the threat is severe and that's my take on it what do you think i used to have i used to have a lot of guns i'm not going to disclose whether i have any or not but um if i'm going to cross over into canada you should not have a real gun or to go inside military installations. Oh man, so that covers it pretty well. Here's another baton flashlight. This is more like a baseball bat, a miniature baseball bat. So very bright light as well as that. And it has the I forgot what these are called. I used to know. What are they called? These are designed to really hurt somebody if you jab them. So jabbing points is what I'd call them. So this is a really good baton. But I think this one's more effective because it's heavier and bigger and brighter. So another backup. So we pretty much have these two. These three are just uh, baby backups maybe to use on... A vicious dog these three well shit might as well just go for the big stuff with a vicious dog right if I go for the little stuff it could be a really tough to to uh, put to uh, manage pit bull or something where even these won't even phase it um, all right well that's let's see here oh yeah then there's just the legal pepper spray oh so that brings up the point I made earlier. Maybe not use the bear spray either, except as um, last defense due to legal issues. Since bear spray is not legal to use on people, this is. So maybe I should have this more handy up front and then put the bear spray further back, I think is what I'm going to do, yeah. Um, so yeah, the stuff that has legal issues, I'm going to have those towards the back and stuff like this up front oh i almost forgot this knife i mounted up here this is a oh i used to know oh man that's tight okay all right this knife is actually vintage or antique it was i think it's a vietnam era let me see U.S. Cornelius. Because of the condition, it's not worth a fortune. But um, these are collectible. This one would go for maybe one to two hundred dollars. But anyway, so what I like about it, this one um, has been specially. Is it serrated? The top has been filed to be. Kind of razor sharp which it didn't originally come that way so we have this serration top and bottom that could just be devastating but again the problem with this two things is contact and it can be deadly so i might end up in court trying to justify deadly force on somebody with this so I think this also is going to be categorized as um, last um, alternative if the others fail or something and the threat is severe. Um, what is the saying? It's better to be judged by 
a jury of 12 than to be carried by six at a funeral. So, yeah, this is these are kind of popular as a next downgrade from a gun would be something like this. But due to the person-to-person -person contact, a gun is more preferable for uh, dealing with a life-threatening source. Somebody breaking in my front window generally would not be a life-threatening force, except I don't know if they have a gun or not. So in that case, a gun would be better. But the chances are they're not going to have a gun. What do you think? What are the odds somebody breaking in a camper, someone camping uh, with a gun, what would those odds be? And should I have a a pistol or a shotgun or whatever for that reason? And if so, which gun do you recommend? You know, when I was in the army, they said don't call them guns. They're called weapons for whatever reason. Oh, and then here's another knife. I broke the tip on this one. It looks intimidating. But, uh, so, let's see the tip broken. I think it's still going to be just as effective. Eh, probably not as effective. That's that's a substantial break. <laughs> so you saw how quick that opens. Um, the serrations here are just... Uh, you wouldn't want to be hit with that. <laughs> okay, this would be less deadly. But if I stab someone in the neck, it could very well be deadly. Tonight I'm parked somewhere that's a little sketchy. Um, Liggett, California. Well, actually Liggett, I don't think is sketchy, but some of the nearby cities are. So I might just leave all of these out except this one. I need to put that back so I don't hurt myself. The other ones I can't really hurt myself with if they're just lying out here like this. Any other weapon I missed that would be practical for full-time or even part-time RV living out in public like I do. Sometimes a campground is full and I need to park somewhere on the side of the road. Or the campground really sucks like they do around where I'm at now. There's a campground north of Liggett where all the sites are sloped and by the highway. And I just don't like it. Noisy neighbors. All right, so, yeah, I would love to hear your comments. I'm not, well, I guess I'm an, a much more above average expert on all this stuff. But I don't know everything. I still have some things to learn. Lifetime learner, what do you think about these weapons? What are your recommendations? Thanks. Oh, I also uh, almost forgot to mention before I completely stopped the video because my editing software is flaking out, so I'm trying to keep it all in one run, is uh, to just simply take off. And instead of dealing with the assailant, just put the key in the ignition and take off or possibly have the key already in the ignition ready to go, um, which in my case is okay because... They cannot open the doors to get in by the, uh, so I can beat them to the, to taking off before they can get inside, even if they're right there at the driver's side door. Uh, I might later on give a hint how, how I'm able to, uh, secure, to keep people from breaking in my doors, even if they break the window, they cannot open the door. Um, I'll give you a hint right now. It's, I use a deadbolt. Uh, but I'm not going to disclose the location of the deadbolt. Um, I think the chances are pretty low there's any risk of me disclosing it. Uh, I'm just not popular enough for anybody to stalk, but maybe I will be in the future with your help by clicking all of the fun stuff down below. I'm not going to beg and all of that. It's too, too many other people do that. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate your comments. Talk to you later. Bye.